Hello, if you are looking to slot in a new LivePower 4 V2 into an existing battery bank, there's a couple of considerations that you need to make in order to maintain closed loop communication. If you have an existing bank of just LLS or LLV2 batteries, you'll need to make sure that they're on the latest firmware. And when you slot in your new battery, make sure that the dip switch IDs are set to a unique value and that the sixth dip switch on the protocols is set to up. This will allow it to communicate with the LLS and V2 just fine, and you can add it to your existing bank. Now, if you have old LifePower 4s, LifePower 4 V1s, instead, you'll need to make this dip switch ID set one to master if you're only adding one, and if you're adding more, you'll need to make sure that those have unique IDs as well. And then on your protocols, you'll need to make sure that your sixth dip switch is set to down that will allow it to communicate with the V1s and use the new CAN bus feature with communication with whatever inverter. Now, you also wanna make sure that your master battery has your protocol set. So say for example, you're communicating with an EG4 18 KPV, you wanna make sure dip switch one is set to down so that you have that EG4 protocol locked and loaded. Now, what if you're making a battery bank out of only V2s? In that case, you'll want to make sure that each battery has a unique ID, but the one consideration that you'll need to make that's different from the V1 Life Power 4 is that your master battery will have dip switch ID 1 set to down. That is different from the V1 and is a consideration to make. Now, of course, you set your protocol however you would like. So if you have EG4, of course, you'll set protocol 1 to down and use the CAN bus as normal. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this, and we'll see you in the next one.